everyone. I'm so excited to be talking with you guys today about fragrance concentration. This is a topic that has confused me for years and I only recently found out the true answer. And it's not that like Eau de Cologne is 5% pure perfume and alcohol and the Eau de Parfum is 15% pure de Parfum and alcohol. It gets a bit more complicated than that. If it's your first time here, I'm so excited that you're joining us today. My name is Ashley. Uh, I live in Paris. I moved here about five years ago to pursue my dream of becoming a perfumer. Um, and then I got my Master's of Science in Scent Design and Creation, and I now work as an apprentice perfumer at a large fragrance company, creating fragrances and learning how to create fragrance. So because of this background, I'm able to bring you this video today. I can actually provide some insight into the fragrance creation and formulation process and kind of explain what people actually mean when they say eau de cologne, eau de toilette, eau de parfum, and if there's even any weight to that in the end. That's what we're kind of going to be looking into. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what these different concentrations are supposed to mean. This is kind of stuff that you have maybe seen in other videos or you've had explained to you as a sales associate, so I'm going to go through it super fast. In this world, in this perfect world where fragrance concentration makes sense, eau de cologne's are 5%, they're fresh, they're ephemeral, they're a moment in time. Eau de toilettes are supposed to be a bit stronger at 10%, uh, pure perfume and alcohol, eau de parfums 15%, and extra de parfums at 20%. And that's supposed to give you all you need to know in terms of the strength, longevity, performance of your fragrance. And the reason this confused me for years is that I had eau de toilettes in my collection that outperformed some of my eau de parfums by a mile and it was so difficult to find a correlation between this label and how my perfume was actually performing. And after I started creating fragrance, it really shined, shined, yeah, I was going to say shone. It really shined a light onto um, how this all works. So when I started creating fragrances, I really love these like ethereal floral notes and when I put them together a lot of the times I smelled nothing so I was like okay well let me just up the concentration make this a uh, x-ray de parfum whatever and I still smelled nothing then I would create another fragrance and at one percent this thing was a beast it was stinking up rooms and I was like okay this is really interesting and it really made me understand what was happening with our fragrances and how they're kind of independent of fragrance concentration so because of this because you can create a fragrance at one percent and make it be big um, or you can create a fragrance at 50 percent and not smell anything this kind of idea of a fragrance being 5% in alcohol, I think it's really just to let the consumer understand because they're not watching fragrance YouTube videos. They don't have time for like a 10 minute explanation. They just need a vague idea of why it has this little thing at the bottom of their fragrance. But what's really happening is that certain fragrance molecules have higher or lower odor thresholds than others. And all that means is the ease that you can actually smell them. So some fragrances you smell really well, but only for about three minutes and then it disappears. And that's just a property of this fragrance molecule. Other fragrances, they're light, but they're tenacious. So you smell this like gentle, maybe amber or musky smell, but for a long time. It might not have the zing of some of these loud materials, but it's consistent. And as a perfumer, what you're learning through this years and years long process of learning how to create a fragrance is how to blend these things where you have the delicacy of some notes, but you can use the other notes to boost them and make them last longer. It's also really up to what the client wants. Maybe they want a really refreshing but ephemeral experience, or maybe they want something that's going to stick with you forever, or maybe they're looking for something elegant that's somewhere in between those two spectrums. A lot of people complain, you know, like, oh, why didn't they just make this fragrance more performing or long? And sometimes when you make a concentration, if you want the beauty of that fragrance that you love but doesn't last very long, that's the only way you can have it. If you added in more powerful molecules, it would kind of destroy that existing beautiful structure and you have to just kind of appreciate it for what it is. Now, sometimes you can add stuff to it and make it more... Um, 
performing and that's kind of when we get into flankers right sometimes we'll see flankers and you know we have our original and then they make a more performing version did they just up the concentration not always again sometimes with this flanker with the stronger more performing flanker they had to add more powerful materials so the concentration might actually be the same but let's say the very performing material in there was the ambroxan or maybe they had a really strong patchouli or a very um concentrated rose absolute it can be a number of things it can be a synthetic that they're adding more of it can be a natural that they're adding more of um, but the fragrance itself might actually be at the same you know 15 percent 18 percent concentration it's just that they're able to add in um more performing materials so that's kind of a better way i think to think of fragrance performance and fragrance concentration it's not just adding more of the pure perfume and alcohol it's if you're not smelling your fragrance it's definitely not just because you know they cheaped out or maybe not definitely but most likely it's not because they cheaped out and just decided to make it 10 percent instead of 15 percent really chances are at both percentages that fragrance was going to smell pretty similar so now this leaves us with the question okay so how do we choose then if eau de toilette and eau de parfum are not telling me you know if my fragrance is more concentrated or not what is it telling me? So this is where we get a bit into marketing. Um, you know, a lot of times things are ca categorized as eau de cologne because they're for men, right? A woman isn't so keen on wearing a cologne. Um, sometimes uh, they want to express that this is more of a nighttime perfume and eau de toilette just doesn't really work when you think we already have this association that eau de toilettes and eau fraiches those are more day they're fresher and so they'll use eau de parfum or parfum extra to show that this is either like an all-day wear a deeper fragrance things like this but generally it's not, it's not a good indicator, I think, of work. Because for example, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, it's a fragrance for women, it's a fragrance I love. This fragrance has really, really good performance and longevity on me. I get a great life out of it. And it's an eau de toilette. And I'm sure, you know, many of you out there, you know that a lot of your colognes, you know, it might say cologne, but it's a pretty big fragrance. I mean, Eau Sauvage is a cologne, and the longevity and wear on that is not bad at all. So, yeah, I think that's a really good example of how lighter, allegedly lighter fragrance concentrations still work really well. Another way of picking is, in general, these more citrusy perfumes don't last very long. Again, Eau Sauvage is an exception to that. Um, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, it's more of a fruity citrus. It has an apple, lemon situation going on to make it so that that citrusy note lasts a lot longer. Generally, you're gonna have better longevity out of like florals or woodies, balsamics, these type of things. But there's no hard and fast rule and that's why it's so, so important to get a sample of a fragrance and actually give it a good wear. Because even with certain reviews, there are fragrances, um, for example, Angel Share, which is a fragrance I absolutely love, and I know people get really good performance on it, the vast majority of the population. I don't, I don't get anything beast mode out of that fragrance. I think that fragrance lasts maybe three hours on me, which is more than enough for me, and it's really a fragrance that I love and would recommend to anyone to try. But really, it's very, very personal, the longevity on some fragrances. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope it helped you understand fragrance concentration a bit more, that it's not really so much about the eau de cologne, the eau de toilette, the eau de parfum. These are really better markers for the style of the fragrance. You know, is it a refreshing fragrance? Is it a men's fragrance? Is it an all-day wear fragrance? And by that, I mean, like, can you wear it any time of the day? Because as we've discussed, just because it's an eau de parfum doesn't mean it's going to give you the longevity and projection that you're looking for. It's really something that just has to be done by trial and error. And it's not just because they didn't want to make this fragrance at a certain concentration. Sometimes, you know, that beauty only comes for that amount of time and we just have to appreciate it for what it is and i'm sure there's a life lesson in there somewhere um let me know what some of your best performing 
or unlikely performing fragrances are. Let me know, you know, some eau de parfums that had no longevity. Even better, let me know some extras. If you know of any extras that had no longevity, usually if they're gonna give it that title, um, they're gonna, again, either include materials that are gonna give it more boost or up the concentration if it does work for that specific fragrance formula. But if in your case, you know some extras that for whatever reason don't perform, I'm curious. And let me know some of your super performing eau de cologne and eau de toilettes, just so we can kind of decide spell the myth that concentration is very closely associated with this because in my opinion I haven't found this to be the case um, even before I was a perfumer it's just now that I create fragrances I can kind of see why upping the concentration doesn't directly correlate thank you so much for watching this video I hope you found it interesting and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video bye everyone